everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another watercolor project for you. Today I'm going to show you how to create this rusty truck using the Art Impressions mini truck set. So let's get started. I'm inking up the truck with some sepia, and I'm just making sure I get it all nice and inked up. The sepia is going to be a nice base color for our rusty truck. Now it's all inked up and I'm going to stamp it towards the bottom quarter or bottom third of my watercolor paper. This will give me enough room to create a scene in the background. So I'm just pulling the color out of the lines very carefully, pulling the color into the middle of that truck instead of into the window and then just going around the truck where it would be the darkest and pulling, pulling some of that color out. This is our first step with most of our projects. You're going to go around and pull all that color and soften it out and create that three-dimensional look for your focal image. So I'm just really quickly going around the whole image and just pulling the color into into the middle of the of the truck. I believe it, I think I just switched brushes here. Um, the white one, the one with the white uh, bristles, the one that I got from Art Impressions. I like sometimes I like the way that works better. It depends on the look I'm going for. So I'm pulling the color out of these wheel wells here. That's going to be really dark underneath there. And the inside of those tires right there. Now you'll notice I'm going to be cleaning off my brush, putting, pinching off the water, and then coming back in and going around this truck a little bit more. I could have sped this up, but a lot of you like when I do things in real time, even though I do do some editing because sometimes I get distracted while I'm, while I'm watercoloring and so I try to edit out some of those, some of those things so that it's not quite so long. These videos are long enough as it is without you seeing, having to see all the little things that I do while I'm watercoloring. So just putting my shadows in, that's all I'm really doing here. And then we're going to come back in and put some color on our palette and really give this, bring this truck to life. And those uh, fenders right there are going to be really light on top and then they're going to have some really nice shadows and some really nice color at the bottoms. So now I've pulled all the color out of my lines and I'm going to go back in. I'm using brown here, which when I use my Copic markers, I use a lot of different colors to create a rust effect, but this brown actually is a really good col rusty color. So I'm just going to go around where I think the rust would be and then I'm going to use that brown to create the shadows just like I would with any other color, but I'm only going to put this color where I think that the rust would build up. So as you can see, the rust would probably settle at the bottom of those fenders. If it was sitting on top of the truck, it would make the, the roof of that truck really, really rusty. We're going to come back in here with a color and really make those rusty spots pop out. So when you're creating a rusty truck, you have to just think about the color that would really go well with this rust. So if you did a red, the rust is probably not going to show as well. Whereas if you did a green or a blue or a purple, not that there's any guys who have trucks that are purple, but it doesn't really matter. It's whatever you want. You just want to kind of think about that when you go to color the truck in itself. You really want to use a color that's going to make that make that truck pop out. And I think this comes, so if you look on the color wheel, this, this brownish orange color 
the complementary color, which means the color that's directly across from the orangish type color is blue. So when you put complementary colors together, they really, really accentuate each other and really make each other pop. So I'm going to use a blue in this in this video and you can see the contrast between them is really nice and really makes that rust stand out. So I'm going in, I'm just putting a little bit more on that door and the, those things in the back, putting some more on some darker areas on the the root the ru uh, the rust on the roof of the truck and I'll come in and I'll also put some behind those fenders and on the top of the hood and I know it looks like it's just gonna be a red like a completely rusty truck but once I come in here with the other color over this rust it'll really start to bring it out So I'm just going to go in and add those, add some rust to that, a little bit more to the truck. And I'm trying to build the color up slowly so that I can get some really dark areas. Like on that door and then on, on those fenders. Remember, you don't want to color this in completely either. You still want to use the same basic technique that you use for anything. You want to build your color up and you want to leave the highlights and the white spaces because that's what's going to give you your dimension. This truck is such a great a great image to use so you can create some masculine cards. Um, my father is really into old rusty trucks and I can always find so many ways to color these up to make different cards for him. It never gets old. This is actually I think going to be his Father's Day card as you saw the card project in the in the beginning of this. That's going to be his Father's Day card so it's it takes a little bit of time but it's definitely worth it to just have something different. Now I'm going to come in here, so I'm putting some sepia on my palette here. And I'm going to go in and do the wheels with that, with that brown, the sepia. And I think I'm going to do some of the wheel wells underneath as well just to get those nice and dark. And this doesn't take, I mean, this is not, I'm not using a ton of color here. Just enough to give the hint of those wheels. And we're going to put some grass and some flowers in, so it doesn't really have to be perfect. Now I'm just, I think I'm just softening some of those hard, hard edges. And trying to blend that out so that those dark areas are really at the bottom of that of that, um, hub, it's not a hubcap, what is it? The fender. I always want to say hood or fe <laughs> I'm obviously not a car girl. Now I'm just softening those lines, trying to bring that highlight right back. Get rid of some of those, that some of that color. Now you can see I'm coming in with that, the, the fine tip of that brown marker and just darkening up those wheel wells again just so they're really really dark. When you do this it really adds a lot to your projects to come in with that fine tip and really just darken in some of those areas. Especially this little running board here as the water is just going to sit on that so it is going to be really dark and rusty. And I'm just following the artist drawn lines. I'm not drawing, drawing in any of my own lines. I'm just following the lines of the stamp. And then some of them I'm just going to soften out. 
if it just looked a little harsh. Remembering to keep that highlight. And as usual, I like to really get in there and make everything really... I take, I take a lot of time with my coloring because I just love to color. You definitely don't have to get this detailed. You don't have to do as many layers. It's all up to you and how you want your project to look and what look you're going for. You could definitely do this in a lighter version. I believe Bonnie, Bonnie Krebs, the creator of Art Impressions, she, I believe she did a rusty truck, which was a lot really light, and you could so you could go that route, or you could, you know, spend some spend some time and really get a really deep look. With Father's Day coming up so quickly. Can't even believe it's already June. So here I am. I believe I'm using the slate, the steel blue for this. And you'll see as I paint this how just putting that blue in really gives this truck some, some character and really pops that rust right out. And when you, when you mix colors, I don't know if you... If you mix, yeah, if you mix an orange and a blue, you're going to get a, a, sort, a certain kind of brown. You're going to get some brown in there. Just like if you were to mix in, say, green and red. Green and red are opposite of each other on the color wheel. They'll make brown. So anything that's a complementary color when you mix them together will give you some shade of brown. So that really really is good for us because we're going for this rusty truck kind of look so anywhere with the the blue meets that orangish brown color it's going to give some kind of a variation of brown and i just think putting that color in there just makes that truck just look so unique and so um so cool As you see, I'm, I'm putting some water down and I'm blotting some water up, just um, some color up, just because I got a little heavy handed, which sometimes happens. So don't ever be afraid that if you made a mistake or you lost your highlight, you can always fix it. Watercolors, watercoloring is very forgiving. You can just add some additional clean water on top and blot it up with a paper towel and your highlight, you'll get your highlight right back again. Okay, so now I'm taking a post-it note and I'm just going to cover up that back, uh, the back of the truck because I'm going to put some flowers in here and I'm using the, I believe I'm using the magenta and the olive green. Magenta is one of my favorite colors. I use it in all my projects. And then I'm just using the back end, the fine tip of my olive green marker and just drawing some of those, they're very small, these, these little stems on these little flower bunches so I was just I just inked up just the the stems and tried to put those right back in again just to make it so it's there's a little bit of green not all and not all magenta we're just gonna draw some of those back in and then I'll take a damp brush these are really small images, so just be careful not to have too much water on your brush. I'm just going to go along those stems there and then I'll clean off my brush again and come back in and jump my brush around with all of those, all of those flowers. These little mini flowers are so awesome. They, you can use them in so many projects because they're nice and small. They fit in all these little containers. And then I'm just dragging some of that color up so that there's some really light ones in the back. 
Which is, again, going to add to the dimension on your project. So now I'm going to take the mini grass and I'm inking it up with the olive green and I'm just walking it out in some places right underneath those tires and underneath the truck because I envision this sitting in a field somewhere just rusting away and then I'm just jumping my brush jumping my stamp around so I can create some some dark and some light areas so that it really looks like there's a lot of grass around this truck and then as we do, this is the, the one stamp we use our brush stroke. So I'm pulling the color up and out, which is going to soften the line and it's going to bring some of that color, fill in some of those gaps underneath those wheels. And then I'll take, the, take my brush too and come underneath so it gives that grass a little bit of an anchor. I just love the look of that little grass. It's so cool. And sometimes I will put some color on my palette just to give it, or I'll use a little bit of the sepia just to give um, give the ground a little bit of a different color. Give some shadows to where the truck is, and kind of looks like dirt. So there might be not a lot of dirt, not a lot of grass. So I'm just I'm just going in and giving some putting some dirt in. Maybe it's sitting on this little hill and the, the, the grass is kind of not grown so well there because it's getting blocked by the truck itself. And then I'll put some over here. Again, this is, you don't need to get too crazy with the ground, just the hint of the ground so that it anchors the truck on your page and then I'm just softening all those edges out so it's nice and smooth sometimes I like I'm doing here I go in with my fine tip and add a little bit more a little bit more grass just following the lines on this from the stamp originally I add a few of my own Don't be afraid to come in and put some special touches of your own in. Just make sure your project is dry before you do that or you'll get some blotchiness and you won't be happy with it. So it's always good if you're going to do anything like that to make sure that your project's dry. And I'm just going to soften these out. Kind of make some tall grass in the front there. Now I'm going to take out of the, um, which set is this? The little, I think it's like the little radio flyer set. I can't remember the name of it, but there's a two long grasses that have little flowers on top. And one goes to towards the left and the other one goes towards the right. So you ink up the stems with the green and then I did use some violet and inked up the flowers on the top and now I'm just softening those lines right out. And you can always just add your own, a couple of your own in the background. I'm putting the post-it note back on so that I can stamp the same image, the one that goes towards the right, over to the, on the right hand side of the truck. I didn't want to get it in necessarily on my truck. And I'm just going to stamp that just a couple of times.
And now I'm just softening those lines out, blending them. I kind of, if you look, I kind of stamped it a little awkward, but that just, I think, adds to the interest of the project. So now I believe we're pretty much, I'm going to come in and maybe darken a little bit here and there. But this truck is pretty well done. I'm going to start, once I darken some of these areas out, we're going to move on to the background. And this is a background that I've actually done before with the truck too, using the tree set, using one of the fir trees in the tree set. And I'm going to stamp, I'm going to stamp it with some, um, some pine green. And I'm just going to put it in the background and I'm stamping it off on my palette as you can see. I like to stamp, if I'm going to stamp off, I like to stamp off on my palette so that I can use that color later. And then I'm just stamping a few trees here and there, very light in the background because I really don't want it to take away from my focal image, especially where we spend so much time on it. So I'm just putting these, a hint of these trees in the background just to give a little more interest. And I think it really gives the illusion that this is, uh, this is kind of in a field somewhere growing a bunch of, <laughs> growing a bunch of wildflowers. And now I'm just softening out the bottoms and then creating kind of a hill with just the color that I used to stamp those trees. Now I'm going to take the same stamp and just do a couple more trees in the foreground there. So I'm just building up that background scene a little bit. So I'll ink it up and I'll stamp it a few times. I didn't really stamp off this one like I did in the background because I really wanted those trees to really be in the distance. This, these ones I want to be a little bit more in the foreground. And I'm not trying to be perfect. Trees are not perfect. They grow every which way. So I'm just creating that, that anchor for them and I'll start pulling the color out of the lines and just softening those, softening those lines right up. Jumping my brush here and there, making sure to leave some white space because you don't want to color it in completely because then your image will really go flat and you don't want that. So here and there, jumping it around with not a lot of water because you don't want big, big water spots all over your project. And then these ones up here will be really in the distance, so they're very light. You see, some of those trees are really dark and some are really light. I just really love to do these type of projects where you get a nice scene in the background. Just adds to, adds to the story of, you know, people's imagination when, you, when it comes to a picture or whatever that you're painting. It gives them a feeling or 
makes them think of a special place that they've been. I did a truck for a friend of mine. Actually, I did one for Art Impressions, and he liked it on Instagram, and I thought, oh, let me just do another one and send it to him because he said it brought back some really fond memories of his grandfather in his house in Maine and he was just so thrilled to receive it in the mail and just does my heart good to make my friends happy with just a project that I might have done and thinking of them and it goes a long way. I think your friends are, are one of your most important things in life as well as your family and it just makes me happy when I can make them happy. So I kind of just added a little bit of a hill there with a little bit of a hard edge just to give the idea that those trees might be behind that hill. And now I'm just putting a little bit of color that's left on my, on my palette for a, just a little bit of a sky behind here. I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of color on my brush at all. Just really just using the color that was left over. And then I'm just, yeah, again, just picking some of that color back up off of the hill. <laughs> I got a little crazy with the with the sky. Now I'm just going to sign and date just like we do for all of our projects. And I'll put this one on a card for my dad. Thank you so much for stopping by and joining me today. And I hope you'll, if you haven't already, you'll subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.